Tuberculosis is the leading cause of death in HIV positive patients, but remains a disease that is difficult to diagnose. The diagnosis of tuberculosis is based um, on clinical signs, chest x-ray, <coughs> smear microscopy, expert and culture. However, uh, these tools uh, have um, some uh, difficulties and challenge. For example, uh, symptoms can be scarce and not uh, specific uh, of TB. Uh, chest X-ray is not always available, and signs may not be specific to, uh, to TB. Uh, a smear microscopy has a poor sensitivity, and a sputum sample is required. Expert uh, performs well, but also requires a, a sputum sample, which is uh, sometimes difficult to obtain from sick patients and uh, re uh, also requires a laboratory, and culture uh, also requires a sputum sample and a high-level laboratory. LAM is a new test uh, that is useful for, for uh, diagnosis of tuberculosis in HIV-positive patients, uh, but has a poor sensitivity, around 50%. However, this test has other advantages, such as uh, being a point-of-care uh, test with uh, rapid results in 25 minutes. It uses a urine sample uh, instead of a sputum, which is an advantage for patients that cannot produce a sputum. And despite these advantages, this test is not widely used. <clears throat> Current WHO recommendations restrict the use of LAM tests to HIV positive patients with symptoms of tuberculosis and very immunocompromised, uh, CD4 less than 100, or seriously ill. However, we hypothesize that LAM could have a high diagnostic value in field conditions in addition to other tests that could be useful in patients less immunocompromised or with a scare uh, TB symptoms. And based on previous evidence that could identify uh, patients at high risk of mortality. And finally, that the LAM implementation will be feasible in field conditions. With this rationale, we uh, aim to assess the diagnostic value of using LAM in populations beyond those in which the test is currently recommended and in contexts where the diagnostic conditions are not perfect. We aim to assess the risk of mortality in patients with positive LAM compared to a negative LAM and also the, uh, to evaluate the feasibility and implementation aspects of using LAM. We conducted an observational study with prospective and cross-sectional components in eight fa health facilities in Mozambique, Malawi, and DRC. The study population were HIV-positive patients, adult patients. We had three groups of patients. Group one were patients with uh, that self-reported TB symptoms that were coming to a health center or an outpatient department uh, who were sick and they were uh, seeking for care. And they were enrolled in the study uh, uh, regardless of their CD4 count. Group two were patients that were hospitalized in medical wards, irrespective of the TB symptoms, uh, if they were presenting symptoms or not, and irrespective of their uh, CD4 count. And group three is a bit different population. They, these patients, they were not uh, self-reporting TB symptoms. These were patients that were whether newly diagnosed with HIV or on follow-up for an HIV consultation, so coming to an HIV clinic, but that they were very immunocompromised with CD4 less than 100. So these three groups uh, included patients for whom the, uh, the LAM is not currently recommended. Patients received a clinical examination and a urine sample was requested for LAM. Sputum samples were requested for microscopy, expert and culture. Uh, chest x-ray was also requested and all patients were followed during uh, six months. And for the feasibility evaluation, we use a standard questionnaire, semi-structured interviews, uh, prospective study and program monitoring tools. So here this table shows the characteristics of the patients enrolled in the study. So we have the three groups uh, of patients that I have just mentioned, and I would like to highlight some uh, aspects. 
Uh, in group one, who were uh, patients who self-reported TB symptoms seeking for care in a health center, uh, we can see that the median CD4 is relatively high, uh, 340, and a, a low proportion of patients, 7%, were seriously ill. This is important because seriously ill is one of the eligibility criteria for LAM. So in this population, we see that few patients will be eligible only uh, taking into account this criteria. Group two uh, were patients hospitalized in the medical wards, and uh, I have said that these patients were uh, enrolled irrespective of the presenting symptoms, but we can see that after asking for symptoms, uh, almost all patients had at least one uh, TB symptom. And group three were patients uh, newly diagnosed with, uh, with HIV or follow-up uh, consultation, and they were not self-reporting TB symptoms, but when we ask uh, and we look for symptoms, half of them presented at least one TB symptom. We can see that one-third of the patients in the medical wards could not produce sputum, uh, while almost all patients could produce uh, urine. So here in this table, we have the test results availability and the diagnostic yield of groups one and two, so patients who were sick with symptoms. Uh, let's look first at the uh, test results availability. We can see that uh, almost all patients, 99%, had a LAM result, and this is because uh, almost all patients could produce urine, and uh, this was done as a point of care test, so uh, results were immediately available. However, uh, one third of the patients did not have an expert result, and this was not only due to the fact that some patients could not produce sputum, but also to programmatic reasons. Uh, in the health center, sometimes there was no, nobody to uh, collect the sputum sample. There were challenges to of trans of transportation, to, uh, uh, to transport the samples from the health centers to the hospital where the, where the expert was done, uh, and other challenges that made that uh, patients at the end of the day did not have an expert result and a similar situation for microscopy. This uh, has a direct impact on the diagnostic yield of, the, uh, of these tools. Uh, in this study, we define the diagnostic yield as the patients who were diagnosed through a tool, so with a positive result, among patients with TB defined as any positive laboratory test. So meaning that if someone does not have a laboratory test, has less uh, chances to, to, uh, to be diagnosed through that uh, test, obviously. So we can see that 80% of the patients with TB were diagnosed through LAM, uh, again, because almost all patients had a LAM test. So despite the poor sensitivity, a number of patients could be diagnosed through LAM. In contrast, uh, low, uh, lower proportion of patients were diagnosed through expert for the same reason, because uh, a number of patients did not have an expert result. And same for microscopy. Uh, a number of patients did not have a, a microscopy result, and on top of that, the microscopy has a poor sensitivity. Here this table shows LAM uh, positive results. Uh, we have the three groups of uh, patients. So in group one, patients with symptoms uh, attending a health center, um, <clears throat> and irrespective of the CD4, 17% of all the patients coming uh, had a LAM positive result. And we can see that in, uh, uh, in uh, patients with uh, CD4 more than 100, in which the test is currently not recommended, uh, relatively high proportions had a, a positive LAM. In group two, uh, the proportion of uh, LAM positivity was higher, one quarter of the patients, and again, uh, among patients with more than 100 CD4, uh, relatively high proportion of patients had a uh, LAM positive. If we look at uh, TB symptoms, uh, uh, LAM, uh, uh, LAM positivity was higher among patients with TB symptoms, but again, uh, almost all patients in this population had at least one symptom. Group three, uh, these were patients that, who did not self-reported symptoms, but who were very immunocompromised. 12% um, had uh, a positive LAM, and if we look at uh, those not presenting TB symptoms, a small proportion still had a positive LAM. Uh, regarding the mortality at six months, 
in group one, symptomatic patients, ambulatory patients, uh, and in the subgroup of those with uh, less than 200 CD4, we compare uh, LAN positive with LAN negative. Um, and we also could compare uh, LAN positive who were not treated. Um, so this will be patients that will be missed uh, by other tools with uh, LAN positive patients that were uh, treated. This comparison was possible because in Malawi for a period of time, uh, the LAN could not be used for um, for patient management as per uh, request of the national program. We can see that uh, LAM positive not treated had a higher mortality than LAM positive treated and than LAM negative treated. And this uh, higher risk of mortality remain after adjusting for other factors such as seriously ill or CD4. In groups two and three, uh, again, uh, among hospitalized uh, patients, irrespective of symptoms, uh, um, those with a LAM positive result had a higher mortality than those with a LAM negative result. And uh, in patients ambulatory who did not self-report symptoms, those with a positive LAM had a higher mortality than those with negative LAM. And uh, the higher risk of mortality also remained after adjusting for other factors. Now, regarding the feasibility of using LAM, um, um, a number of staff of users of the LAM were interviewed and they um, report that the test was easy to use, uh, material to perform the test was simple, there was no extra space uh, required to perform the test, and the results were available in a short time, less than one hour for LAM, compared to uh, two days in median for a spitum-based uh, test. Uh, we saw a very high inter agreement, and some challenges uh, were the, uh, that the reading card was not used in two countries prior to, uh, to the study, and this may have led to misinterpretation of the, of the results, because as you can see in the picture, uh, you have the, the, the test, uh, and there is a reference card that should be used to read the result of the test. If the band that is appearing in the patient window is, has an intensity, a color intensity, fainter than the lowest grade of the reference card, which is grade one, then the test should be interpreted as, as negative, even if there is a small uh, a faint bat, bar that appears. Um, so that's why the, the use of the reference card is, in, is important. Another challenge is the fact that uh, there was a requirement of uh, CD4 to identify eligible uh, patients for LAM. In conclusion, LAM has a high uh, diagnostic value under field conditions in this study, uh, and it will be useful in conjunction with other diagnostic tools. We also saw that uh, LAM uh, is useful in a broader population than what is currently recommended, and this will be patients, uh, ambulatory patients with more than 100 CD4, uh, hospitalized patients irrespective of the presenting symptoms and the CD4, and uh, it may be also uh, useful in uh, newly diagnosed or follow-up HIV positive positive patients with low uh, CD4 uh, along with TB symptom screen. LAM also identifies patients at higher risk of death and these patients could benefit for uh, fast TB treatment and other supportive uh, measures. And we have also seen that LAM uh, implementation is feasible. Uh, it was uh, successfully used as a point of care test uh, with uh, rapid results. It used uh, urine, uh, which uh, we have seen that almost all patients could produce. Uh, it was easy to use, no need of laboratory. However, uh, it's important to strengthen the use of the reading card. The impact of the, of the study and, and future perspective, uh, 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 this study has helped introducing LAM in countries where uh, it was conducted and accelerating changes in national guidelines. Uh, it has also guided MSF and national programs on the use of the test in the field. It has also informed uh, WHO for the 2019 review of the LAM uh, guidelines, and uh, these results have been uh, particularly appreciated uh, because they, re they reflect a real world uh, conditions. And future perspectives will be the expanded use of LAM in uh, populations in which the test is currently not recommended. The definition of uh, new TB diagnostic algorithms uh, that include LAM and uh, the conduction of uh, prospective study is in uh, field conditions using new uh, LAM tests that will be uh, nearly uh, in the near future available. Thank you very much.